Hey everybody, this is video three for our un uh, unit on limits and derivatives, and we're going to be taking a look at our limits that um, on functions that have asymptotes. We're going to be looking specifically at vertical asymptotes for this video lesson. So you should have with you your class notes worksheet. Um, this is the first example on there, number one. And you should also have your graphing calculator, because when we get towards this, the back page of this worksheet, that's when we're going to want to have our calculators available, because we want to be able to look at the function, um, the graph of the function, or maybe even the table feature that we have. So I'm going to grab my highlighter, and you can use your fingers as we um, use the look at this graph. I'm going to start by approaching from the right-hand side. This plus sign means the right finger, or from the right side. So if I go to my farthest right spot on the graph, and I trace the graph, I end up heading down. This leads us down, and it leads us down to negative infinity. Now, if I were to trace the graph from the other side, where it says the left-hand side, that means my left finger is coming across and it's following the graph, and this one actually leads us up to positive infinity. You may write a plus sign, or you don't have to. Then that means that if I'm approaching 3, and without any superscript, this is called a superscript, Without the superscript means that both fingers must be working at the same time, so from both directions. Well, if I had two people walking along these paths, one heading from the left, one heading from the right, I would actually say that these two people will never meet because they're heading in opposite directions, and therefore my limit does not exist. All right, example number two. So let's start again on the, well this time we're starting at the right hand side, right? So we have the right hand side and I'm following the graph, following it, following it, oh, and it looks like it's going towards positive infinity from the right side. Well, let's go from the left side. I'm going to follow it all, oh, it goes towards positive infinity as well. So here, since both of these paths are leading towards the exact same thing, when I just approach negative 6 with no direction, left or right, I end up approaching positive infinity. Now many of you might be thinking, or I hope it's crossing your mind, that if there's an asymptote, you can't actually cross it, and that those two people will actually never meet if these were two people walking along these paths. But because they're coming infinitely close to each other, along this asymptote. They are so close that they could just reach across and touch each other. We actually say that the limit does exist, and it exists going towards infinity. I'm going to leave number three for you to try on your own, and we'll be able to talk about that one together. Let's go ahead and try number four then. So on the back of your worksheet here, we're taking a look at number four, and this time I've actually given you a function. I've given you the equation f of x equals x divided by x minus five. I want us to start by identifying the vertical asymptote. From the introduction video, we talked about the vertical asymptotes coming from the denominator. And really what it means is that there's a certain place on the graph where x cannot exist because if it did, then I would have a zero in my denominator. And we know that that's not, cap that's not possible. So where is that here? Well, it's at x equals 5. So that's where my vertical asymptote is. So just already knowing that, I know that I've got this place on the graph where something's happening on one side and something different's happening on the other, on the other side. Now, from the previous two examples, they could be heading in opposite directions or they could be happening in the same direction. And we're going to use the table to discover that. So I'm going to start by looking at, oops, I'm going to start by looking at whether or not it's coming from the left and from the right. My left hand side is the ones that on a number line would be on the left side, and then the right hand side of 5.1. So let's go ahead and put x divided by x minus 5 in our graphing calculators in the y equals. Make sure you use parentheses in your denominator. Now by looking at my graph, I can already see that these two branches of this function, and one is headed downward and one is headed upward. So I actually know that my limit is not going to exist. 
but let's take a look at what's happening on either side. So please go ahead to your table of values and uh, enter in some 4.9 and let's actually get closer. Let's do 4.99 and on the other side here let's do 5.01 and 5.1. So we're going to take a look a little bit closer than how I had originally planned. So if you have anything in your table, go ahead and clear it out and then type in those values, 4.9, 4.99. Go ahead and type in 5 and see what happens, 5.01 and 5.0 or 5.1. On this side, I am actually at negative 49 and then negative 499. When I get to 5, I actually hit an error. And then here at 5.01, I'm at 501 and then 51. So if you were to even get closer than 4.99 and you were to do 4.999, you're actually going to be heading down. These are going to negative infinity on the left hand side. On the right hand side, however, if I continue to add zeros between that decimal place and the 5, I end up heading so large, they're going up and this one is positive infinity from the right hand side. Because they're headed in opposite directions, if two people were following those paths, they would never meet. Therefore, the limit does not exist. Let's try number five. Number five is the f of x equals two x divided by x squared plus x minus two. In this case, if I were to factor this denominator so I could find my asymptotes, I would have two asymptotes, one at uh, negative 2 and 1 at positive 1. That's where these two equal 0. Let's take a look at approaching negative 2. Once again, go ahead to your y equals and, and enter that in. So 2x divided by the quantity of x squared plus x minus 2. And if you take a look at the graph, I've got three pieces to my graph. And I want to approach negative 2. So I'm looking at the piece farthest this one and then the one that does this. So we can already probably determine that my limit is not going to exist because right here at negative 2 something's going up and something's going down. Well on the left hand side, okay, which is actually, I wrote this backwards, this is my left hand side because those numbers are smaller than negative 2. I'm actually headed towards negative infinity. On the right hand side, so that's this side, I'm actually headed towards positive infinity and the graph shows that as well. Which means that my limit as we approach negative 2 with no direction, not one sided limits but both sides, my limit does not exist. Alright, up next we've got number 6 and number 8. I'm leaving number 7 and 9 for you to try on your own. Number 6 is 3 over x squared minus 4. If I were to factor this, I would find that I actually have two asymptotes. I've got an as a vertical asymptote at x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. Well, let's look at where we're approaching positive 2. So where I'm approaching positive 2, I can look at my table of values and I can say, well, if I look at 1.9 and 1.99 and on the other side I've got 2.01 and 2.1, I can easily go to my table of values and substitute in those amounts or I could be looking at the graph, looking at the picture and evaluating this. So I'm going to use the table and I'm going to look at 1.9 and 1.99 and then I'm going to look on the other side of 2 at 2.01 and 2.1. Now if those aren't enough values or I'm not getting close enough, I can always of course do 1.999 or 1.99999 as long as I'm getting closer and closer to 2 because that's the limit that I'm looking for. And I can see that on one side they're going negative and on the other side they're going positive. Therefore my limit will not exist if I'm looking at it from both directions. All right, last one together. Go back to your y equals and let's enter in f of x equals 1 divided by the square root of x minus 4. When I look at this one, I get a unique picture. I can see it probably happens somewhere around 4 that this graph kind of like stops. Well, it doesn't really stop. It's just the pixels, but there is an asymptote. The reason for that is anything on the left-hand side of this, let's say 0, 
if I were to substitute that in, I'd have the square root of a negative number, giving me imaginaries. And we're not working with imaginaries for our limits. Therefore, I'm really only concerned with the numbers on the right-hand side. Well, how do I answer the question of a, of a one-sided limit from the left? The limit actually doesn't exist because I can't actually approach anything from the left. There's nothing to approach. From the right-hand side, however, I can approach positive infinity. If I were to follow this graph along, I would approach positive infinity. Well, if from the left-hand side I approach, well, I can't approach, I have nothing, and from the right-hand side I get to positive infinity, I actually say that my limit does not exist. All right, so I'm leaving with you for you to try number three. You've got to add number three. That was the graph on the front page. And number seven and nine for you to try on your own. You may use the graph or you may use the table of values in order to answer those two questions. That's it, and we'll talk about this the next time we're